trying to ask God this morning. One of the prayers I pray for this service is that everyone will kiss the, this church this morning. That everyone will kiss the ground of Trinity Sanctuary this morning. What does it mean for heaven to kiss a place? That means the divine, divine people, the, the, the divine, the, the, the divinity of God will come in his mightiness into this place this morning. There's somebody here this morning, you are going to have an encounter in your life. An encounter that is from God. Not from man, any man. That's why I don't want you to look at the man of God, but look at the God of the man of God. If you have an encounter with the man of God, it cannot last. The moment you leave the presence of the man of God, that encounter might leave you. But when you have an encounter with the God or the man of God, that is a man that is called by God. When you have an encounter with the God that sent that man of God, it's a lasting encounter. A man in the Bible had that an encounter. The man called Saul of Tarsus, he had an encounter with divinity on that day on the road to Damascus. Hey, that encounter changed his life. He changed his life totally that he became the best and uh, he became the, 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 I don't know what to call it. He became, he surpassed all the apostles and the disciples that have gone before him. He was able to finish well. He was able to, 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 to see heaven and see his crown before he left. I pray that that same encounter that Paul had with the giver of life, with the one that sent me, the Lord Jesus Christ, you will have that encounter with Paul this morning, with God this morning. You will have that life-changing encounter with Jesus this morning. You are going to pray. You are going to say, Father, let heaven kiss the ground of Trinity Sanctuary this morning for my sake, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I want to have an encounter like never before. An encounter that will change my life for the best. An encounter that will deliver me from every sin and every habit that have held me down. Every sin and every habit that have not allowed me to become like God. Father, this morning, let me have an encounter with you. Oh, Lord, kiss my life this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, talk to God. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father, Lord, this morning I surrender myself unto you. I pour myself out upon this altar and I say, Father, Lord, Son, Father and the Holy Spirit, pour yourself upon me. And Lord, as I speak as you have sent me, Daddy, back it up with authority. Speak unto our lives. Let the message be a life-changing message, O oh Lord. Holy Spirit, help me this morning. Spirit of the Lord, move into this tabernacle and begin your work. Begin your work right now. 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 Holy Spirit, move into this congregation. In Galagada Baba 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 Ragada ba son toro bo 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 bo, igala ba 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 ba. Regedebo, regedebo, regedebo. Begin to do the work of renewal. Mahange de ba 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 ba. Deposit yourself upon men and women this morning. Have your way, have your way. I have no power of my own. Holy Spirit, I have no. Power of my own, Holy Spirit, I look unto you. Help me. I have no power of my own. 
Holy Spirit, I have no power of my own. You are the one that brings to pass the counsel of God. Move into this congregation this morning and do that which God has ordained this morning. Thank you, mighty Father. Holy Spirit. I compare to you, Holy Spirit. I have I pray as you have sung that song unto the Lord. Holy Spirit, take over our lives this morning. We have surrendered to you. We have no power of our own. Take over our lives this morning. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. You can have your seat gloriously before the Almighty God this morning. I want to thank the Lord Almighty for this special grace and the privilege to stand on this altar to minister His word once again to us. Quickly, let's go on to... What God does for us this morning. I was always before my father because I am a messenger and a messenger doesn't have any power of his own than to hear from the owner of the message. And yesterday I had to go before him as I was informed to take the first service, second service this morning. I said, Father, I am a messenger. What do you have for your church? And God said, <laughs> go and tell the church that we have a great cloud of weaknesses. Hello, somebody. So the topic of this morning is the cloud of witnesses. Let somebody say the cloud of witnesses. Let's open our Bible to our main verse will be from Hebrews 12, 1 to 5. Quickly, let's open to Hebrews 12, 1 to 5. It says, are we there? Are we there or should I wait for you? There's no time, so I will run on. He said, we are for, verse 1, Hebrews 12, 1. We are for, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sins which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. I want you to know that please. He said, consider him. Who? Jesus, your master, who has gone before us. Consider him. What excuses can I or you give today why we will not serve God? What excuses can we give? Oh, rain is falling, I can't come before the presence of God. That's no excuse. That verse said, man, consider him, Jesus Christ, who has gone before us. But in all this situation, he was not weary. Was rain not falling during the time of Jesus Christ? Oh, they are not answering me. <laughs> I said, don't be cold this morning. Shake off the beast. I want, or you want me to take us through spiritual exercise this morning? Shake off the beast. In, we don't have time. We'll have, we'll have sang that song and shake every beast of cold out of our life in the name of Jesus. Did Jesus not go through the rain? Did Jesus not go through persecution? In fact, none of us went through the persecution he went through. Did he not go through trials? Today we are riding to the church luxurious cars, jeeps of millions of naira. Jesus had no car to walk to the temple. He was walking ma, from town to town. He had no donkey. His father was not rich. His father was one of the poorest and mother in, in the land of Hebrews. I mean, did you not hear that he was walking on foot with his disciples and going from town to town? Did he have a Lexus Jeep? Did he have Mercedes Benz, sir? Did you hear it? The only time he rode a donkey was when, when he was about to render Jerusalem. I know that it's time to be accomplished as well. And he said, go! I want to showcase who I am. Just a little before them. A little of my glory. But look at every aspect of the Bible. Jesus never rode, but he accomplished his purpose. And that's why that verse 3 said, consider him 
who also went through all this that you are complaining today, that I am complaining today, they felt too much. Even if there's a little drizzle of it, people will say, I'm not going to church today. I rain the fog. Drizzle na rain. We have forgotten in those days, we used to sing that song. I don't know. They don't sing it today again. What are the songs that we sing today? Those songs that move emotion, that moves body, that doesn't move the spirit. I pray we begin to sing songs that will move our spirit to heaven in the name of Jesus. In those days we sing, Tino Banjo, Emio Tele Jesu, Tojo Baro, Emio Tele Jesu, Abi, Tino Banjo, Bojo Romeo Tele, Duro Demi Jesu, King Tele, or. You know the meaning of that song? Ah, each time anything is funny, then it's funny time that I say, Ah, do I have a cow? But even when they have I had the car. That song will come and say, You are singing that song now. Put it to all practical. I will enter rain. I will enter rain. I want to warn you if you don't have this rain, will still continue. Go and get umbrella. Some of us know get umbrella. If for the purpose of church, go and get umbrella. Enter. Um. The more the rain beats you, the more God's blessing is coming upon your life. <laughs> I'm telling a life testimony of how God has dealt with me in my life and how he has taken me to and where he's still taking me because I will not allow anything to stop me from being in his presence. So consider him who went through the same thing and he was not wearied by whatsoever he went through. He was a man of like passion like us. That's why Jesus Christ did not come to a rich father and mother if he had come, they would have said he, 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 he succeeded because he was what? Rich and he has everything. That's why he has to come in the lowest ebb, lowest form. That's why he had to go through the same thing, sir, that you went through. Pharisees and Sadducees were upon him. Trial, persecution, tribulation. They did not give him breathing space, no resting place. But he never gave up. I pray for somebody, no matter what you are going through, and you are agreeing down, you are about to give up. I prophesy life, fresh fire back to your life in the name of Jesus. The grace that was upon Jesus Christ that made him never to give up, and he was always looking to the purpose the Father has sent him. That grace come upon you. I said, That grace come upon you. I said, That grace come upon our youth in the name of Jesus. Oh, time is going. Let's just read to verse 5. Mighty God. Mighty God. I pray God we open somebody's eyes to the revelation of this message this morning in the name of Jesus. Let's read verse 4. Verse 4 says, verse 3 says, For consider him that endured, he endured. He stood through all those trials. He did not shake. He said that endured such contradiction, contradiction, things against his life, things against his ministry. Of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. When you consider him, you will not faint, you will not backslide. Verse 4 said, Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And verse 5 is the last one I will take for now. Said, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh. Unto you as unto children, my son, despise not thou the chastising of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Praise the living Jesus. Said he has not resisted unto blood. Is there any of you that have gone through anything and you are resisting and you start shedding blood? Nobody. But let me tell you that Jesus Christ shed blood, resisting. At the Garden of Death, man, I always prove everything I say with the Bible. At the Garden of Testimony, when he was about to face the hardest where God has sent him, he was so much pain, he was so much weary because he was in the human form like you. To the extent that he was almost giving up. And the pain was too much. He left his, his disciples and he went alone. And he said, Father, if it were possible, let this cup what, be taken away. Why? Because the, what, the pain and the, 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 the contradiction was so much upon him. And the Bible said, why he was praying at the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, blood and water, blood and sweat and water was, I mean, they did not read it. And that's why that verse said, consider him, you, have, you and I have not resisted unto shedding of blood and we are giving up. But there was a man that came and was shedding blood through prayer and sweat and he still resisted the contradiction and said, I must accomplish. 
And that's why he knew that he needed grace from the father. Because a woman being that time was almost fainting. And he said, Father, but please help me. My father, at this time, my body, my flesh, everything has failed me. Lord, not my will, but let thy will be done. And strength and grace came upon him immediately. And he went on to fulfill his purpose. And today, the Bible says in the book of Philippians, it said now, God has given him a name. Philippians 2.9. That is above every other name. That are the mentioning of the name of Jesus. Every name must bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. I pray and prophesy to somebody here this morning. You are about to give up. You are about to give up. My Baba said, Ah, that the will of God, pray for the will of God, that grace that came upon Jesus Christ, that renewed him with fresh vigor, fresh grace to move on and face those terrible things on the cross gave him the power to accomplish and made him to become the Lord of Lords today. That grace come upon you in the name of Jesus. I say that grace come upon you. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Tell your neighbor, don't be weary. Your master was never weary. Your master did not give up. Don't give up. Tell your neighbor, no matter what you are going to, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give room to the devil. Don't give room to trials. Don't give room to temptation. Don't give room to contradictions of men. Don't give room to what you are seeing in the church. Some of us say, I'm leaving the church. I'm no more going to church. I was, I was evangelizing and preaching to somebody. One Sunday I said, I, I'm not going to church. Leave me alone, this man. I made up my mind, I'm not going to church. Is it the church that they're always asking for money, money, money? Is it church that you will say many things? And I looked at him, so go to church. What are you doing? I said, I fellowship with my family in my house. I said, I speak to you, sir. Have you forgotten what Hebrews say? Have you forgotten what Hebrews say? That do not forget the gathering together, assembly together of one another. I started to look at him. I said, you need grace, sir. You need grace, sir. Jesus did not look at, at all of that condition and give us his assignment. He kept on. I pray for you. You will not give up. It doesn't matter whether people that surround you are giving every attitude for you to give up. I pray for strength to move on in this race in the name of Jesus. Let's quickly run on. He said, wherefore, seeing we also have compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and seeing we do so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I want to let you know this morning that life is a race. Hello? If you have not known that life is a race, and we are all running to the mark, to the end result. And when you see a race, look at the Olympics or wherever, even in the house sports competition in our various schools. Is it only the people that are running that are there on the field? We have people who are witnesses. We have people who are watching to look at how they are running it. Even when somebody Maybe uh, what they call this uh, relay race. You know in a relay race, you are not supposed to cross another person's lane. Even if somebody crosses another person's lane and he comes first and the person that is the referee said this is the first, do you think that the people that are watching, the witnesses, do you think they will agree? Do you think they will agree? They will raise up their hand and say, eh, they came first but they crossed another person's lane. That is the same thing with this Christian life. It's a race. And that's why the Bible said there, in that Hebrews chapter 12. And there are witnesses that are watching every one of us. The Bible says in that, for, in that place, it says, since we are compassed by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that easily beset us. And let us run the race that is set up before us. With all what? Patience. Patience is needed in this race called life. Many of us give us easily because we don't want to be patient with God. You have been trusting God for foot of the womb and then it's not happening. You say, God, you are too slow. You will go to Operation Sharp, Sharp, Short. Sure. There is a church in Lagos, one of my, uh, my last zone, in Lagos, second to the last zone before I left Lagos. They call that church Sharp, Sharp, Jehovah Sharp, Sharp. That is what people are looking for today. Especially, sorry, my youth, I'm coming to you, closer to you. Many of the youth don't want to wait today. They are waiting for Operation Sharp, Sharp. And that's why we have people going into Yahoo. 
That's why we have people going into whatsoever plot. I don't know the name they call it. Let them call them devilish, demonic, end time names. I pray to not be your portion in the name of Jesus. If you are there this morning, God is saying as you tell you that there are clouds of witnesses watching you. It doesn't matter whether you are doing it in the secret. Let me tell you, nothing is hidden from God. You cannot hide it from God. Hey! You can't continue to hide it from God. You may cover your sin that others may not know. You cannot hide it from God. You can't hide it from God. And you can't hide it from some witnesses. For witnesses. Who is a witness? Let's start from who is a witness. I like, I'm a teacher. I like breaking. No, I'm not a teacher by profession, but I'm a teacher of the word of God. That's why most of the messages are teachings because my master, Jesus, loves teaching. Through teaching, you receive your miracles. Through teachings, your knowledge is broadening. Through teaching, there's nothing you want from God. You are set free from every bondage. Through teaching. That's why the first thing he did from Matthew chapter 4 to I think 6 or so or 7, five, Matthew 5 to 7 was the, almost about 30 days. He was teaching people at the what? Someone of the mountain. Thorough teaching for three days. That's why they are hungry and they have to feed them. Because when you are taught and you have a knowledge, you are set free. Many of us, the other way after is you come to church and your body, they give you messages, jump up, up and down and down, your emotions will move. There is no spirituality in you. After leaving, your emotion have, your emotion come back. You are weak. You get to you be say, oh, oh, because you have just moved the body, nothing of the spirit. So when you get to you are just there, oh, you sleep. What do we go and teach my people? When Jesus Christ said, he said, teaching them to observe the last statement, go out into the world and, and preach the gospel unto all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. Mighty God. Is God teaching somebody here this morning? I pray you will be taught and you'll be taught well and you walk by it in the name of Jesus so quickly let's go on witnesses who is a witness I went to the dictionary it said a witness is somebody who was in an event and who can really say what has happened in that event second definition of a of a witness is it said one who has a knowledge of something or who can be called to give evidence or account of what happened. A witness can be able to say exactly what happened. But do you know there are, ne there are negative witnesses? There are positive and negative witnesses. I want you to hold that one in your hand. So quickly, let's go to find out. Our Bible passage, our Bible verse, Hebrews chapter 12, 1, talks about these witnesses. And I was before, many years ago, when God was bringing me down and sat me down I was in the place of waiting on the Lord and God took me to this place and he started downloading from heaven that scripture, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 to 5 I was weeping and God opened my eyes and he told me the different type of witnesses I want to tell you they are with divine witnesses and they are also physical witnesses let's quickly run on to see the different type of witnesses that we have I will start with the divine or unseen witnesses. The first set of witnesses that we have is the Trinity. The Trinity. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They walk together and they are watching us. Let somebody say they are watching us. Thank God we are in Trinity Sanctuary. Let me let you know that whatever step you take, whatever you may, may move, you move. Whatever things you think in your life, Trinity are watching you. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, it talks about they walking together. I said, come! Let us. Let us. And there was what? A synergy between the three of them. And they started creating the heart. Putting things that were in order back to other lineage. The Trinity worked together. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are watching you and me. They are the first set of witness that we stand on that day. And we say, those things that I do in secret, those things that I do in the secret, let me tell you, you cannot hide it from the one who created you. That's why you need to be very careful. 
my late mother, I will say, we always say, Omo, Ro, Koto, She. That means my child. Think of it before you do it. Everything has repercussion. Galatians 6, 7. What does it say? It said, Whatsoever a man sows, he will reap. After the Trinity, what do we have? The second set of witness we have. They are called the 24 elders. 24 elders. You can see them in the book of Revelations, chapter 4, from verse 1. Verse 1 downward to 10. He talks about in heaven, and when John saw heaven, he saw the, the angels and everybody worshiping God. And the Son of Man, Jesus, was sat, sitting down on the throne, judging. And he said, the 24 elders were there. They were, the first, they were doing what? what? Bowing down and worshiping him. Those 24 elders will stand against us, or they will stand for us, depending upon whatever you are doing. Just like EFC, is it EFCC or ICPC, they said, Remember, we are watching you. Is it FCC or F A ICPC? Oh, you don't, you don't watch news? Don't think I'm just a pastor. I'm, I'm so, I follow information. <laughs> I read papers and I go through. I think it's ICPC, ICPC. They say, remember, we are watching you. And they are also the one that have the logo of the eagle. And the eagle, you know, you can see far. The eagle is like this. Thank God, our daddy taught us about eagle the other time. He sees far. We have the 24 elders and another person in that revelation, another set of people in that revelation, chapter 4, he talks about the four beasts. He said one looks like a lion, one is like a calf, one is like the eagle, and the other one is in the form of, uh, I think, like a son of man. The four beasts, they are all by the side of the throne of God. They are watching over all, and they will stand as witness on that day. So if you think your wife is not watching you, and you are trying to toast another woman outside, you are trying to play fast. Know that those people, they are watching. They are unseen, but they are seeing you. That's number two witness, Abby. Then number three witness, we also have what? We have the angels. We have the angels of God. We have the archangels. When you look at uh, Revelation chapter 2, it talks about the different angels and it talks about the strong angels. We have the archangels, we have the cherubims and seraphim. They all have their work. And let me tell you that every child of God has an angel that is watching over you. If you don't know. Has an angel that is watching over you. And that angel will report back to God everything you are doing. If you think you are born again and you can be hiding to be committing secret sin, there is nothing called secret sin because the witnesses we expose it. In that Revelation chapter 2, he talks about three churches. He said, And to the church, the angel of the church of, of, of Simeon, to the angel of the church of Sardis, to the angel of the church of Tarita, and different churches, Trinity Sanctuary has an angel watching over it. And that's why when I tell you, every of you call yourself workers and this thing, you are taking your work anyhow, you are not at your duty post. When pastor is not around, you do whatsoever, and then we come back, we see everywhere in order, God is watching you. Those people are watching you. The angels that are in charge and are watching, and they are there to monitor, they are watching you and making reports. And on that day, the books will be open. The book of Revelation and the books will be open. The first book is the book of life. The second book is the book of records and works. Is God speaking to somebody? The angels are watching you. The four, angel, four core angels, the strong angels, the archangels. Angel Gabriel, angel Uriel, angel Michael, and I was it more the fourth one. Ah, uh, I don't, you know, I don't pray in the name of angels. Those <laughs> they pay when we are ganglican, but we have passed that one. But they are true. They are true archangels. Four of them. Then we have the shadow beams. Eh? Raphael, God bless you. Is there any Raphael in this place? Raphael. And then we have the cherubims and the other form of angels. That's the number three weaknesses. Abby, four, number four. Then after the, I'm talking about divine witnesses, unseen witnesses. After the angels, we have the, 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 the dead. Oh, no, no, don't let me call it the dead. We have the saints that have gone before us. The saints that have gone before us because they are not dead. The book of Corinthians said they are not dead, but they are what? Sleeping. And on that resurrection day, we shall see them. We have the saints, man, that have gone before us. 
they will testify. They will testify. People like Brother Paul on that day we testify and say, Baba Femi Fekoya, Baba Femi Fekoya, I was in a more terrible situation than you. You had a wife, you had children, God didn't give me permission to have wife, God did not give me permission to have children, I did not have any child, I did not think about that, and I say, God, you are a useless God, God, you are not faithful to me, God, you are not good, I did not look at that and say, God, maybe you promised me that I will be fruitful, you didn't give me chance, and he said, because of that, I will serve God anyhow. God Brother Paul did not look at the encumbrances, and Brother Paul went and became the best apostle. That day, Brother Paul will stand, he will stand as a witness. Saints like Abraham, who have faced, saints like Joseph, who have faced with sleeping with a beautiful man, woman. You don't know what they called a second, second lady, not first lady of Egypt. All those fine, they artificially fine. They would have put all those, all those things now. They put, put them. The woman, and then looking physically beautiful, but inside their demonic spirit came to Joseph and said, "Lie with me." Are you a man here? Yeah? The Bible warned. It said inside it, it's what they are carcasses. That woman that is doing like this, and you are thinking is better than your wife at home. You are looking for a grave. You are about to sleep inside the grave. The Bible says, it says, stolen bread. Stolen bread. Stolen bread. Jesus said, I will not allow myself to be found in the grave. He ran. He did not only run. He, he, flew, he, he flew and left his clothes. Joseph will stand against many of them. I'm talking to many here. Many marriages today are collapsing because of infidelity. Among Christians. Let your eyes be single. That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus Christ said. Wait till they carry your eyes. They talk, 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 talk. Let your eyes stay where it is. Not be you go marry that woman. Whether I get short leg, whether I get K leg, whether I get bow leg, whether I short, whether not be you, they force you. They force you. Like our first father in the law, parking there, your me say, that you say, say, you don't carry arm, you don't carry arm. They force you. Let your eyes be single. And you your eyes go, they do pa 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 pa, looking like a, 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 a ambulance ball. Pa 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 pa. Let your eyes face heaven. Joseph will stand. Youth, Joseph will stand. Youth, Joseph will stand. You never marry, they chop the forbidden fruit. Waiting, you know, ne never pay for. Waiting, God never be you. you, did, you did. The Bible says that the bed should be undefiled. And ladies, my daughters, your flower is very fine. All the devil is looking for is that flower to be deflowered and make you just a carcass. It will not be your portion. Be fear careful. Guard it jealously. Be like a woman like Ruth. Be like a woman like Mary that God was looking for somebody who he can what, choose to bring forth the savior of the world. He found a woman like God Mary who kept herself. He's God speaking to somebody. Let me move quickly to the living faith, living, living, living witnesses. He says, since we have a great cloud of witnesses compassing us, surrounding us, let us lay aside. Throw away. Oh, time will not permit me for this. Let me go on. The next set among the living saints are number one. Okay. Okay, sorry. The last one among the unseen is the devil and his angels. Do you know that the devil and the angels, they are also witnesses? They are watching you. The Bible calls it Satan in Revelation 12 10. He called him the accuser of brethren. He's watching you so that I can witness against you. In the book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 1 to 10, when the man of God, Joshua the high priest, came to present the case of the people before God, the Bible said, and Satan rose up and said, Lord, you can't answer his prayer. It's as a stained garment. That place always shake me that a high priest. 
Joshua was not an ordinary priest. That is the senior pastor coming before God. But Satan stood and said, God, he has sinned. His garment is stained. If not for the grace of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ said, yeah, but I am I, 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 for him. And he said they should remove that stained garment out of him and put upon him a new garment and a mighty crown. I pray for somebody. No matter whether your still garment has been stained, whether you have messed up yourself before God, God has sent me that it's still possible for you to become like him. God is saying Jesus Christ died for your sake and he can remove that dirty garment, that stained garment from your life if only you can say, Lord, take over half your way. I am sorry, Lord. Joshua the high priest did not even pray. Jesus interceded on his behalf. He said, Satan, I rebook you. He said, get out. He said, this is my anointed. And he called the angel. He said, yes, it's my his garment is still. He said, Remove that garment. They cried chapter 3. Time will not permit us to go on. And they removed it and said, Cry him with a new garment and a fear matter crown. And they crowned him. And he became and said, Joshua, you are now a new person. You are supposed to be a man that will stand out, a man that other people will look up to, a man that people will look in righteousness, a man that people will look in as an example of Christ. Oh, time will not permit me. I believe in time. We are going to write. The other witnesses, your conscience is your witness. Living witness, your conscience is there. Your shadow, your shadow follows you everywhere you go. Your conscience always judge you. A newspaper, I was sharing with the staff here last week before I went to camp. A newspaper that is just physical, that is not spiritual. When they started it, I was still young. Not too young. Uh, yes, I was young. Guardian by Hebrews. The topic of that, the, the, the theme of that paper is conscience nurtured by truth. Is your conscience being nurtured by truth? There's nothing you will do in this life. Your conscience will be one you. Am I wrong? Your conscience is your second partner. It will stand on that day. Your shadow follows you everywhere. It will stand on that day. Those are the great witnesses. The Christians, the brethren in the church, they are watching you. They are also witnesses. The unbelievers, they are watching you, whether you are living an example of what you preach. They are watching me, Baba Femi Fekoya. Those are the weaknesses. And the Bible says something. It said, since we are compassed about with this great cloud, not just more, everywhere they are, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that easily beset us. What are weights? Weights are habits. Those things that you think they don't matter. Now, they are not reading in the Bible. I was talking to somebody, he said there is nowhere in the Bible that said do not smoke. Yes, it's not written, but it's smoking good. And I started proving, I said, don't you see that you are not taking wise. You are killing the body, which is the temple of God. It's the habit. Smoking is habit. It will take some people. He said, lay aside every way. There are still Christians in the church who smoke. There are still Christians who are here who drink alcohol. There are many. And your body is the temple of God. He said, lay them aside. Every way, start with the ways, habit, throw them away. And then go on to the sins. Different habits, you know their own habit. Throw it away. The sins are there in the book of uh, uh, Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, from verse, uh, verse 19 to 21. Different things, you know them. The Bible says, throw them away. And Lord, run with patience the race that is before you. Looking unto Jesus the author and financial of your faith. Who for the joy that is set before him, looking to heaven, ran it and he meets it to the end. I want you to rise up on your feet. Is there somebody here this morning? You have heard this message. You know you have gone astray. You want to surrender your life to Jesus. You want to say, Lord Jesus, I know you are the only one that can help me. There are many people, many things witnessing against my life. But Jesus, thank you because you came and died for my sin. Lord Jesus, this morning I want to surrender my life to you. I want you to rise up and Lord, raise up your hand wherever you are. You want to surrender your life. You want to surrender your life to him. Can you raise up your hand wherever you are? You want to say, Lord Jesus, Lord, please take over my life. I surrender my life. Please, can you raise up your hand? Jesus is waiting for you. He's waiting for you. you want to pray and round up. Can you raise up your hand? You have been living that life anyhow. But this morning, God has spoken to you. You want to surrender. Where are you? He's waiting for you. Where are you? Where are you? Jesus is waiting for you. Is there anyone there? Is there anyone there? Is there anyone? If there's no one, I want us to pray this prayer. 
Galatians chapter 5 verse 7 says something. It says, you have run well, but who did hinder you from obeying the truth? You have run well. Ah, you are in this department. You do this and that. But are you doing it rightly? You know, I started by saying somebody running a relay race and cross another person, he can't get the prize. I pray for us. On that day, we will get the prize in Jesus' name. You are going to pray this prayer. You are going to say, Father, help me, O oh Lord, to run this race clearly, holding on to the truth, running with the truth, O oh Lord. Help me as I look forward to you, as I look up to you, the author and creator of my faith. Help me to run it well. Help me to make it to the end. Help me, O oh Lord. Do not let the witnesses stand against me. On that day of judgment, do not let the witnesses stand against me. Help me, Daddy. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And so, Father, Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We ask, O oh Lord, please help us that none of these words will stand against us on the judgment day. We ask for your grace to run this race rightly in the name of Jesus. Looking up to you, our master, who for the joy that was set before you, you were not wearied and you ran it unto the end. Daddy, give us the grace to run it to the end in the name of Jesus. Blessed be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Let somebody shout hallelujah. If God has ministered to you this morning, shout hallelujah.